Welcome back to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I'm Jason Bowman, and I love cars. Today I'm going to tell you my story of the Mini Cooper. The first generation new Minis, R50, 52, and 53s, are creeping into my under $10,000 in manual transmission search on Facebook Marketplace. I wanted a new Mini bad when they first came out, but at the time I didn't have a pot to piss in. I built my own Cooper S of sorts out of old rusty Mazdas. Now that the Mini Coopers have become inexpensive enough for the pores, like myself, to afford, they are definitely worth a second look. The Mini Hardtop was designed by Frank Stevenson. The design was inspired by the original two-door Mini. The Rover Group UK and BMW Germany started development in 1995. The two groups had conflicting ideas. Rover wanted an economy car to replace the Rover 100, and BMW wanted a small sporty car. In January 1994, Rover was purchased by BMW which ended with both parties getting their way. The Rover 100 got a revised... The Rover 100 got revised and the BMW retained their small sporty mini design. As the story goes, the designers working on the mini project had finished the full-size clay model in preparation to present it to the board of directors. Frank Stevenson realized at the last minute that the model did not have an exhaust pipe. He quickly picked up the empty beer can, stripped off the paint, and stuffed it into the back of the clay mini. The board liked the mock-up so much, it was greenlighted for production, completely unchanged, including the exhaust tip that looks suspiciously like a beer can. The Concept Mini was originally unveiled at the 1997 Frankfurt Motor Show. The Mini was assembled at BMW's Oxford plant in Cowley, Oxford, England. Mini advertising was quite clever. <laughs> The Mini received a facelift in July 2004 for the 2005 model year. The convertible, R52 chassis code, was also introduced. The first generation new Mini didn't change a lot over its model run, aside from minor exterior styling changes and improved interior equipment. Mechanical updates included replacing the Rover R65 manual gearbox with a Getrag 5-speed. Engines. In 1997, Chrysler Corporation and Rover Group, which at the time was a subsidiary of BMW, formed a joint venture called Tritech Motors. The goal of the venture was to design a new small straight four-cylinder engine. The engines were made in a purpose-built factory in Brazil. Tritech stands for the union of the three countries involved, Germany, the United Kingdom, and Brazil. The two engines I'm going to talk about are the T16B3 1.6-liter Tritech I4, and the T16B4 1.6 liter Tritec supercharged I4. The T16B3 had a 77 millimeter bore and an 85.8 millimeter stroke. It had 114 horsepower and 110 foot pounds of torque. I was today years old when I learned the same engine was used in the PT Cruiser and in the Neon in non-US markets. The T16B4 came in the Cooper S. You guessed it, the S stands for supercharger, in this case, an Eaton M45 supercharger with intercooler. The engine's compression ratio was reduced from 10.5 to 1 to 8.3 to 1. The T16B4 was rated at 160 horsepower and 150 foot-pounds of torque. The T16B4 won the International Engine of the Year Award in its category 1.4 to 1.8 liter engine in 2003. The T16B4 also won Ward's 10 Best Engines Award for 2003. Other specs. The R50, 52, 53 minis were front-wheel drive with transverse-mounted four-cylinder engines. The chassis design had the wheels pushed to the corners of the body to improve handling. The styling of the car was pure retro, closely resembling an original mini. The retro theme continued with contrasting roof and door mirror colors, optional rally lights, optional bonnet stripes, and black fender flares and rocker panels. The Mini Cooper was available with the ZFVT1F continuously variable transmission or a 5-speed manual transmission. The 5-speed was a Rover R65 between 2002 and 2004. A 5-speed Getrag 52BG unit was used between 2005 and 2006. The Cooper S also came with two transmissions. The first transmission was a proper 6-speed Getrag G285 manual. The second choice was an Azen 6F21WA-TF60SN fully auto-tragic transmission. 
With flappy paddles, that was intended for those that ate too much paste in grade school. Ralph, are you eating your paste? No, Miss Homer. Good. Now, sprinkle your sparkles on your paste. All minis had a drive-by wire throttle pedal, anti-lock brakes with electronic brake force distribution. They also had a BMW corner and brake control. It is a further development and expansion of the anti-lock braking system, designed to distribute braking force during braking whilst cornering. An ASC traction control system and a DSC electronic stability control. DSC sensors continually monitor steering angle, vehicle speed, wheel rotation, lateral acceleration, brake pressure, and yaw, which is the tendency of the vehicle to rotate around its vertical axis. If DSC detects wheel spin or over or under steer, it helps restore stability by applying the brake on a particular wheel, thereby preventing a spin. Model designations for the minis imported into the U.S. were the R50 Mini Cooper, the supercharged R53 Mini Cooper S, and in 2005 the R52 convertible model was added. The Cooper and the Cooper S are named after John Cooper. These nameplates were also used on the sportier versions of the Classic Mini. There was also a John Cooper Works version, but I can't afford that one, so I'm not going to talk about it. That would just make me sad. Stock Performance 0-60 to 60 times listed the 2003 Mini Cooper 0-60 to 60 mile per hour in 8.5 seconds and the quarter mile in 16.7 seconds. 0-60 to 60 times also listed the 2002 Mini Cooper S's 0-60 to 60 mile per hour in 7 seconds and the quarter mile in 15.5 seconds. Aftermarket performance. There's no shortage of Mini performance parts. Cold air intakes. Cap back exhaust. 4 PSI of boost can be added with an underdrive supercharger pulley. Performance camshafts. There is also a plethora of handling goodies. Coilovers. Lowering springs. Stiffer sway bars. Strut tower braces. Racing. Minis are often drag raced. That Cooper took that Civic to Gapplebee's. Minis are popular autocross cars. The Mini is a track day beast. Minis are often rally. Perhaps the best use for a Mini is enjoying a twisty country road on a sunny day. Wait, what was that? Holy crap, another jackalope sighting! a Mini. There are a few things you need to look out for on these cars. The Tin Worm enjoys chewing on Minis. Common rest areas are the bottom of the doors, below the taillights, the hood near the headlights, under the doors, under the trunk seals. The 2002 Minis had an inconsistent amount of underhood sound deadening material. 
Many early cars were missing plastic pieces that protected the hood where it comes in contact with the rubber near the engine. The problem was the rubber would rub the paint off, which was an invitation for the dreaded tin worm. All minis from 2002 through 2006 are prone to water collecting in the door sills due to a bad rubber seal. This results in rust under the seal or under the step plate. Be sure to check this spot for rust on any potential purchase. Mechanical Issues the experts suggest staying away from the CVT transmission, not because it's lame sauce, which it is, but because they are prone to failure. They are known to fail completely with as little as 50,000 miles. All R50 CVTs suffer the same issues, although the oldest cars likely have the highest mileage. Minis have Harley-Davidson levels of oil leaks. They commonly leak around the crank seal and gasket. The seal tends to dry up and allow oil past. It is said to be an easy fix, but it is labor-intensive as the entire front of the engine has to come apart. If this leak is not dealt with, it can cause oil starvation and possible engine failure. More oil leaks can be found at the crank sensor. The O-ring shrinks and allows oil to pass by. This leak is both sneaky and scary as it will leak down the front of the engine block and blow off when driving, never marking its spot on the driveway. The crank sensor O-ring is another inexpensive part that requires pulling the front off the car. The Mini Cooper S's coolant tank commonly fails at the seams on early models. Mini did update the part. However, experts suggest all Cooper S's will suffer from a leaking coolant tank at some point, as the updated part was also failure prone. I did a car guru's instant market value for the 2002s. They claim the average asking price of the base model is 5012 and the average asking price of an S is 6193 I peeked at Facebook Marketplace and the gurus appear to be on the right track for pricing. It's hard to say where the future pricing of these will go, but for right now, you can get a really nice one for under $10,000. In my mind, the Mini is a lot of bang for your buck for such a good looking, fun to drive car. Thanks for watching Jason Bowman Loves Cars and my story of the Mini Cooper. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. Mm -hmm.